Hey everyone, welcome back, and this is my review of The Last Jedi. I finally got the chance to see it last night, which I guess finally isn't really the word since that was opening night. Went and saw it shortly after the very first showing, and let me say, wow. The uh, words that I think best used to describe this particular movie are what Luke said is, this is not going to go the way you think. Now, granted, I avoided anything that looked like, could have potentially been everything that had to do with spoilers for weeks up to this movie's launch because I didn't want to get my hopes up and I didn't want to have my opinion swayed before I saw it. That being said... I think this is one of the best films since the original trilogy. I have to admit, I'm still an original trilogy guy, but this is one of the best films since the original trilogy that's in the Star Wars universe. I don't know that it quite beats out Rogue One for me, mostly because that final space battle in Rogue One and the last few minutes of Vader walking down the hallway, taking care of Rebels, as Vader did so well, uh, were just simply fantastic. But this movie is excellent. Really, really, really well done. Um, I think that they definitely learned a lot from The Force Awakens and took a lot more leeway with this film as far as storyline goes. Now, as to those who say that it's a remake or rehash of Empire Strikes Back, yes and no, it kind of is and it kind of isn't. I'm not going to get into spoilers just yet, but... Let's face it, most movies are a remake of the same storyline, and there's a reason that that works. A hero storyline works. It sells. It's, it's good storytelling, and that's exactly what this movie did. It was great storytelling. It was uh, great visual effects, great directing, great scenery. I really, really, really enjoyed it, and I went in with expectations fairly low because I didn't want to be super disappointed. Thank you, prequels, uh, but... This movie really took me a lot further than I was expecting to go, both as a cinematic piece and as an emotional piece. It was a great movie. Really, really well done. That being said, from this point on, you've been warned, are spoilers. So if you don't haven't seen the movie yet and you don't want it to be spoiled, then do not watch from here on. Okay? You've been warned. Now, spoilers. I thought the humor was great. Overall, it danced right on the line of being too much, but they did a good job of not going too far, in my opinion. I think the humor really helped to keep the movie from becoming a super heavy emotional piece because you're dealing with characters who are struggling through their life choices, aka Luke and Ben Solo and Kylo, his life choices, Ben Solo, Ray, some of her choices that she's made and the struggle she's had coming with no parents and not knowing who her family was, as well as maybe some of the choices that Leah made. And they struggle through those emotional situations. They kept just enough humor in there to keep it somewhat lighthearted. I like the humor. It was very, very well done. I saw this movie with my 11-year-old son who was just ecstatic the whole entire way through. He thought the movie was fantastic. And I have to agree, the movie was great. There were a few parts that I think they could have left out or maybe truncated the whole scene uh, and uh, the area with the, um, the casino was, uh, it was okay. I don't think that much time had to be spent there for them to c find a splicer uh, and a code break guy to break them into the First Order giant ship. I think that they could have uh, truncated that scene. I think they could have made it a little shorter and the storyline would have moved a little better. I It still was great. Don't get me wrong. It was very cool setting. Um, I just don't think they need to spend that much time on it to find a way to get on the supremacy. That being said... Um, it was cool. Uh, next, I think the Porgs. I don't like the Porgs that much. I don't, it just, oh, the Porgs. I don't even know what to say about the Porgs. I just, I'm not a big fan of them. And that's that. That being said, all of Star Wars movies have stuff like that in them. I mean, there was the Ewoks. There was, well, sort of the Tauntauns, I guess. Um, there, there's always been cute little lovable furry creatures in Star Wars, and there probably always will be. Whether or not I like them is beyond the point. But I don't, I don't care for the Porgs. I, I mean, they were comic relief in some scenes, and so that was fine. Uh, the Crystal Foxes, very, very cool. Brilliant visual design on the Crystal Foxes. Really, really nice. I really like them. Now, 
Uh, as for the storyline, I think they ventured way further out from the storyline as before. And it, granted, in the past, the whole thing with the Star Wars trilogies is that they are like, uh, well, like George Lucas said, they're poetry. They rhyme with each other and they, they do mirror each other. And that's good storytelling. It's good storytelling technique. Um, I think this one, they branched much, much, much further out than they did with The Force Awakens. And I'm so glad because my biggest struggle with The Force Awakens was that it was so close to A New Hope. And this one really, really branched out a lot further than that. So I'm really, really glad for that. Um, some of the character choices. Admiral Hold Haldo, I, I, it was great. She was a good character. I think... I think they could have done a better job just doing that with Admiral Akbar. Um, I mean, he was there. Why not, instead of killing him off when Leah and the whole bridge blew up and stuff like that, why not keep him around and just use him to take care of the supremacy? The same exact way Admiral Haldo did. I mean, that would be a fitting end to a general like Admiral Akbar, who led the attack on the second Death Star. That'd be great. Um, so I'm not really sure why they did that, why Laura Dern's character was that way. It was fine. It was great. Um, I had some other thoughts on there, but I'm going to save it and wait until I see uh, it probably a second and third time just to make sure uh, what my thoughts were there. Um, I think the biggest cringeworthy sequence, uh, or I don't know, cringeworthy is probably not the right word, but the, the part that made me kind of flinch the most was Leah when she gets blown out of the bridge and then all of a sudden she has the ability to like use a lot of force power to pull herself back onto the ship and keep herself from dying in the vacuum of space. Um, I, that, that to me was the biggest, like, Oh, I don't know. They just, I mean, we know that she has the ability to be sensitive to the force. We know that she and Luke are connected in a way that, uh, is definitely through the force. She kind of knows how to sense things in the force, but she's never shown any sort of uh, ability or proclivity to be able to move things with the force, like force telekinesis and stuff like that. So that was the biggest scene that was just like, uh, I don't know. I think maybe they added that in there. Maybe I th my, my thought is that they put that in there later after Carrie Fisher had died as sort of a way of honoring her like she's yeah so that that's my thought about that and it it wasn't terrible I just I didn't care for it that much um I did think that her and Luke their their last scene together was fantastic I thought that Luke did a great job of kind of saying goodbye in a way in a, in a way without saying goodbye which was good um <sighs> The, uh, let's start with, let's go to the supremacy and the throne room and Snoke and stuff like that. I did not see them killing off Snoke. I thought he was going to be the biggest, baddest guy like Palpatine was from day one. He obviously has massive force powers and the ability to do a lot of things. Um, I'm kind of glad though. I think that that whole bit, that whole purpose, really, the whole this whole movie really gave Kylo a chance to become more of his character. The thing I didn't like about The Force Awakens was that Kylo was a super emo, uh, unstable, sort of bratty bad guy. He just, he wasn't that compelling as a bad guy. Even with the helmet, he just wasn't that compelling. Um, whereas this movie really allowed him to kind of step in his own and become the bad guy that I think, uh, they really want him to be. We'll see how that holds up. Obviously in two years, when the final movie comes out, we'll see where they go with it. But I think it was great. Um, I, I loved the fight scene between, with Rey and Kylo together against the Praetorian Guard was fantastic. I'm so glad we finally get a chance to see these amazing, great-looking costumes who are supposed to be the best of the best that are guarding the, the Emperor or guarding the Supreme Leader. They finally show what they're able to do, and man, did they show it well. That fight scene was fantastic. Really, really well done. Really, really well choreographed. Great. Um... I kind of half expected Snoke to like come back to life or a clone of Snoke to like appear. That didn't happen, but I sort of thought it might happen. Anyway, it didn't. Um, so 
Now, on to Luke. I can see where Mark Hamill may have been frustrated with his character and how they were handling his character. Um, you know, at the same time, like, I thought they did a fantastic job of showing the emotional struggle that somebody would go through if they had this person they poured in their, their life into and then all of a sudden they thought they were going to have to kill him. And, you know, it was just... The whole movie was a really great emotional roller coaster of of who did what and why and and the the angst and the anguish that that caused their choices caused as so I thought that was fantastic. I don't know why they killed Luke off. They didn't kill him off, but I I, I mean I know he became one with the Force and and just like he ran out of mana like in the games when you just couldn't use any more force powers. That's what it felt like to me after he was meditating, concentrating so hard to project himself to meet Kylo at the base. And then he just is gone. And that I, I, that I didn't really care for. I didn't think that was the best way to handle Luke's, Luke's character. Um, I mean, it was cool. The whole scene was cool, but then having him just vanish and becoming one with the force didn't really make sense. And they did that. With Mark Hamill, who's clearly still very alive, if you look at his Twitter feed, and then Carrie Fisher, who passed away, is her character still lives on. So it's going to be interesting to see how they handle that in the next movie. That being said, all of those spoilers, um, the design of almost everything in this movie was fantastic. Uh, the ships were great. The supremacy, I don't know why they keep going bigger is better or badder or worser. I... That, Anyway, it was cool. And when Albert, Admiral Haldo, like, light speeds, enters hyperspace and rips the fleet, the First Order fleet apart, that was excellent. But again, I think that could have been better if they had used Admiral Akbar. Just my opinion. But I think that could have been a really meaningful end to Admiral Akbar's career and obviously screen time. Um,. The crate, the plant, the crystal planet was really cool. It, obviously, it looked a lot like ESB, um, and but the visuals are stunning, and that's partly what makes it obviously a great reason they picked that sort of visual look. Those crystals and the white salt sand, um, which begs a question: Are the stormtroopers that go into the base after are they snow troopers or are they salt troopers? I'm sticking with salt troopers because I think that's what they are. Are they going to be like all-terrain troopers, all-weather troopers? Because, you know, anyway, that aside, the movie's great. If you haven't seen it, you need to go see it. It's really, really well done. Really fantastic movie. Go in with your mind open and expecting to just have a great time and enjoy the movie. Watching it with my son was a blast because he, at every turn, was just shocked and in awe and amazed. And it was it was fun. And it was this movie takes you through an emotional roller coaster with so many twists in the plot line that you don't see coming unless you've read spoilers on the internet, which you should never do before watching a movie. That's a terrible idea. Why would you do that? Well, I don't know. If it's a movie you're pretty sure is going to be bad, then that's fine. But not Star Wars. That makes no sense. So all that being said... I enjoyed the movie. It's a fantastic movie. I'm going to go see it again with my family in the next couple days or so. And then I might have some more finalized thoughts. For me, this did not replace the original trilogy. It's close. It's really, really close. Uh, I would say my favorite is still Empire Strikes Back, followed by Return of the Jedi and A New Hope. Rogue One is up there somewhere, and this one is up there with Rogue One. They did a really great job. Great, great job. Looking forward to seeing episode nine and what they do with that and how they bring these characters' story arcs to a conclusion. So, thanks for watching this video. Thanks for commenting, liking, and subscribing on this channel. If you haven't already, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you again soon on the next video.